Okay, so the next thing I've done is I've pulled the edges nice and tight here. So you can see I've got my extra, which will be turned in like that in the end. So it's nice and neat on the outside eventually. I've tacked along the edges here and the straps to try and keep them all together. And I've done the same on the back piece here. Just run some tacking stitches and pins just to all hold it in place so it doesn't come apart. Next I have my straps here, um, which will go on like so. And again, around the top edge, you want to leave a bit more of your outer fabric for turning over and catching to the middle. And I've overlocked all the edges as well, so it just keeps them neat. And the next thing will be sewing them on. Okay, so I've now moved on to doing my eyelets and turning the excess fabric onto the back there and just catch stitching it down. I will show you how to do that on the other side because what I'm doing on the other side is a placket. Um, that will go there. It's just that my stays are very bright yellow and I don't really want them to show through. So just in case, I'm going to add a placket. Now, I don't need to make it as long as the actual thing, so I've just made it so it sort of goes past where that side back seam ends. Roughly so, and then I've made it a bit shorter so it just finishes at the top there. Uh, right, so the next thing I'll do is I've kept this loose. And I'm going to sew it. You can see here I've got a bone. Well, here there isn't a bone. So I am going to sew this right way up. And you can see I've overlocked it just to lean off those edges. Right way up. And I'm going to sew it just the other side of this line here so it's attached quite securely. So then that will just be free. So that's the next stage. Okay, so I've now gone and sewn this on, like so. And I've stopped between two to three inches from the top. And I'll show you why a bit later on. You also need to make sure that you've got a bit left over at the top here, like so. And again, a, this will become apparent later on, so just bear with me. So now we have this placket sewn on. So that, and eventually that will get turned over and neatened off. And then eventually, in case something should show through the lacing, you'll have this nice bit of fabric showing through as a precaution. So... That's that, and I can't stress enough, make sure this is out the way when you sew it on. Otherwise you'll go through this, and that would have been disastrous. Because <laughs> I don't have a lot of this fabric, so... Okay, that's where we're at at the moment. Okay, we're working on to the eyelets now. Uh, as I said earlier, I catch stitched the edge to the liner by hand and the thread's such a good matching colour can hardly see it. <laughs> uh, the idea was I'm doing a spiral lacing which means it goes up like that. It's not quite worked out as well as I hoped it would but it, you know it'll be. It'll do. I'm not the best at doing these eyelets and I probably should have left a bigger gap here because I keep hitting the bone but Never mind. Okay, I'm just going to show you how I do one. And first of all, I start off with a little oar. And I've already started this so you can see it, because the others you can't really see that well. So I start off by poking it a lot and giving it a wiggle. And then going in from the other side. And you should use these because if you cut 
the threads which I'm not going to do if you cut to make a hole you've weakened all the threads and that can uh, risk it unraveling and you'll probably over time lose your entire piece of fabric so this is a way of doing it without cutting through the fabric so then we're just gonna give it uh, this is a slightly thicker or give it a good wiggle this fabric is very delicate so sometimes I have a slight issue where I catch it um, your fabric might not be as delicate but I have to try and really tug at this without causing much damage to the outer fabric here so I sort of try and hold it on both sides as I'm wiggling it I'll hold it and put a bit of pressure in places just in case because the holes have a habit of wanting to keep uh, closing back up sometimes I use pencils just slightly thicker but yeah trying to not catch this fabric and make a big hole for stop it closing up is tough anyway i'm using this um top stitching thread that i used for doing cartridge pleats on the skirt um, it's a little bit thicker so most people use embroidery threads now i'm going to go from the back here and just catch a bit of the fabric and pull this through i'm using a slightly thicker here a wider eye because the thread is quite thick so you can't do this with standard sewing needles because the eyes aren't big enough. So then I just go over it again. That's just something I like to do so it's so cute. And then find the hole. Easier said than done. And try and go up it. There we go. So I'm going up it and you can see it's trying to close up again. So just give it another wiggle. <laughs> there we go, it's opened up again. So now I've come up through the bottom. Pull it slightly tight there. And then, as I say, I've done it. I've got bone there, so I should have left a wider channel. But never mind, I've had to do me, my best with it. So then I go up. And then I go up again. I'm really trying to keep these open. So again, just hold the thread tight. I'm going to do like a cross. That's how I start them off. Trying to keep all the threads the same length. And again, the hole. I'll just hold that out the way. Then I'll come out at the top. You see, I have to keep doing this nearly every one or two stitches. So again, just hold it tight and I'll go down at back. Now I'll start going around and now that now you've done that it's helping to hold the hole open a bit better. So I'm going to start going around now so just hold that piece of thread a little bit tight there and you could try to go around by keeping it straight at the same time and coming up just to the side of the last stitch never entirely works out and as I said I didn't leave enough room to make my stitching even because of the boning bit of a bad planning on my part but it'll do lesson learnt there we go and you can see it's trying to close up again so <laughs> sometimes it helps if you give it another wiggle from the back And you can 
see from the others eventually it will start to keep open I'm not the best at doing these but hopefully you get the idea and eventually you'll come round to meet the other one Okay, so I'm just coming to the end of doing this hole now. Just doing the last one. And just on the back here, just tie it off. I like to do about three. So there we go. Okay, so I've now finished doing the eyelets all the way down. And as you can see, it will end up going up in a spiral like that. So that's how this will be based off. At the top, you do a couple closer together and one over. And then at the bottom, you need them close together. And then it'll finish there. It will start. So okay the next thing to do before i turn the top over is to finish off this bracket here and you will see why i left the last couple of inches or so free i've turned the top in so it's nice and neat and it meets up like so so I've just sewn that down and then by hand I'm just going to catch it and whip a piece of this to the liner so that it stays there so I'll just be doing that little bit by hand and then that'll be sealed in place and then I can carry on by hand turning the top edge of the bodice in like so. I have now turned over the top edge of my bodice all the way around. I left quite a lot because of the curve and it does create a little bit of, a, as you go around the curve, a bit of inconsistency with the how much you turn over. As you can see, I've lost a bit towards the end there. but. It's a good job I left more for the turnover. So now I've got a nice neat edge across the top. And next I've bought this um, really nice lace trim. And it's actually got flecks of um, gold glitter in it, which is like what I've got in the fabric. So it matches quite nicely. I don't think it's going to pick up on the camera very well, but... Just trust me, there is gold flecks in this lace. And this is going to go underneath like so, so it just peeks out the top. So that is what I'm going to do next. Next, moving on to the armhole. What I've done is just trim the layers on the edges here to match, because the cream stuff was a bit long. And then we just, to hold the two layers together, just put some pins in place around it, just while it holds those two layers together. The next we're going to do is turn over part of the hem there. Next we're going to start with turning in the edges along the armhole. So it end up looking like this one here so you just want to make sure that all your seams are flat 
and just place some pins around. Like so. And then continue all the way around the armhole, making sure your seams are placed flat. And then we'll be catch stitching it in place. 